Welcome to the second video in the firewall series for Edge OS. And in this video, we are going to talk about outbound firewall rules. So let's go ahead and log in. We're going to go over to our firewall. And you, if you remember, we've got the two default policies that are set up by our wizard and the interfaces here are eth0 direction in and eth0 local so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a, an entirely new rule set that's gonna deal with outbound traffic so we're gonna add a rule set and we're gonna call this WAN out and we'll call this description WAN out default action will be accept so we'll save that and you can see by default that when you create a rule set it doesn't attach it to any interfaces or directions and there's no rules the only thing we have is the default action which is accept so we need to go in and configure this attach it to an interface and a direction and then create some rules so we want to block outbound traffic on our WAN interface so we're going to select ETH0 and it's going to be out. So we're dealing with sending traffic out towards the internet. Go ahead and save that. And once that's saved, we'll come over to rules and we'll kind of we'll kind of do the same the same rules that we worked on yesterday, but then we'll we'll add another one. First, we'll bring up my website just to show that it's loading so it's coming up and we'll go ahead and add a new rule and we'll call this block HTTP so our action will be drop we'll choose to TCP advanced we'll do establish new related just to cover our bases source we could specify a source so if we have that certain set of machines internally or an entire subnet that we want to apply this to you can put that in here we're, we're just gonna put we're gonna leave it blank so this is gonna be anything on the inside of the firewall that will affect and destination will be port 80 you could also go in and fiddle with that time rule like we did so we'll go ahead and save this and then we'll save our rule order looks like looks like everything's in order so now let's go to my blog and as you can see we are just sitting and spinning we can come over here and we can look at the stats and you can see that the the block the drop action is incrementing and now we've got the site can't be reached but if we do this we go to HTTPS Facebook HTTPS loads loads perfectly until we go in let's copy this rule and then we'll edit it and we'll block HTTPS destination 443 we'll save that save the rule order and now we just get waiting 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 And it's going to resolve it. It'll resolve it. We're not blocking DNS. We're not blocking DNS at all. So you can see that instead of having my router capture that, I went out to Google's public DNS server. And we resolved it just fine, but we are blocking that connection. So if we come in here, and we delete this rule
Come back over here. Now you can see it loads right away. So what else can we do with this? So let's say you have an email server internally, and that's the only host you want to be able to send email out to the internet. What you could do is you could create a rule that blocks everybody except for your mail server. And Okay, so let's talk about what that would look like. Let's go ahead real quick, and we'll delete the HTTP rule. And, and before we do this SMTP, let me show you that this is not a one a one trick pony because I am using uh, 80 and 443 in the videos, but here we're gonna do some SSH traffic outside of this router. So we're gonna go to another router in the lab. And now you can see we get a login prompt, okay? So we'll log out of that. We'll create a rule, we'll call it block SSH. We're going to drop TCP destination 22. We'll save this rule. We'll bring up those stats. And look, the drop, the drop is incrementing and I'm not being prompted for my credentials. So you could use this in that same maintenance window. Let's say you only want SSH going out of, you know, and, and this is, you'd have to use this in combination with other rules because if you're using a non-standard SSH port, like some services will use 222 or 2222. Um, say that 10 times fast, but uh, you would, you'd have to use you'd have to know those uh, ports or you'd have to use it in combination with some other rules to do some more effective blocking. But now if we come in here and we delete this rule, that rule is now gone. Now you can see I am prompted with my credentials and I'm able to log in. So let's talk about how do we allow just a single, you know, machine to send that email out. So let's take a look at that. So the first thing we would do is we would say block SMTP all. And we're going to drop TCP destination 25 and we'll save that because 25 is your standard SMTP port if it's using uh, secure or SSL based SMTP it's a different port for this we're just going to use port 25 so right now we are blocking all of this but we want to allow our email server to send out so what we're going to do is we're going to allow SMTP, SMTP mail server and we're going to accept TCP source will be our 192.168.1.2 destination is going to be 25 and we'll save that and then what we're going to do is we've got to change the order on these rules because you got to remember the firewall reads these rules in order so it's gonna say block SMTP all and it's gonna match this first you're destined for port 25 and eh, you're done so the first thing we got to do we got to move this up which is allow our mail server so it's gonna match this the source address as 192.168.1.2 with a destination of port 25 and is gonna accept and then everything else is going to be blocked. So that should take care of it. You could still mess around with the you could still mess around with the time-based settings and things like that like we did in the first video, so feel free, you know, you can get an edge router for $49 
it's a small investment and the, the payback on it in knowledge and experience is huge. So you can check those out. You can get those from the distributors. You can order them directly from Ubiquity. Um, so if you like the video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. And we will see you at the next video.